Thank you. Thank you very much for your very kind introduction, uh, Mr. Kofi Annan. I may have to write a book if I really want to properly introduce my distinguished predecessor, uh, Kofi Annan. In any way, I feel special to be introduced by my distinguished predecessor, Kofi Annan, after six years in my office already. Uh, Mr. Ted Turner, Senator Timworth, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, everyone. It's wonderful uh, to be here among so many good friends of the United Nations. I'm here with the Deputy Secretary General Jan Eliasson and a number of UN senior advisors. We are all grateful for your invaluable support for the United Nations. United Nations can be strong because you are here. You are always here with us. Senator Worth, I appreciate your initiative to organize this event today. I look forward to hearing from Ambassador Susan Rice, Monique Coleman, and many other honorees tonight. So uh, I will be uh, very brief. But first of all, I would like to applaud highly our distinguished chairman, Ted Turner, again. <laughs> he is an extraordinary man. I'm sure that you will all agree. Mr. Turner, 15 years ago, you did something that no individuals has ever done before, and no one has done since. You gave the United Nations $1 billion. It was an enormous sum of money, of course, but it was much more important than that. It was the difference between hope and despair, life and death, for millions of people around the world. Your gift came at a difficult time for the United Nations, and it represented an inspiring example of how individuals and business executives could support United Nations work. Mr. Turner, I give you my word, we will continue to do everything possible to live up to your expectation for the United Nations. I again thank you very much. <laughs> Dear friends, I'm proud to join you in honoring outstanding individuals this evening. Kofi Annan left a strong legacy as United Nations Secretary General. Now he continues serving the world through his foundation and other endeavors, including the situation in Kenya. It was for the first time that former and current Secretary General sat together in one table when the crisis happened in Kenya. It was 2007, the first year. It's normally very unusual, rare, that former and sitting Secretary General sit together. We met all political party leaders at that time, and he delivered the peace and stability in Kenya. He is still engaging himself in Kenya situation. I'm most, and I think we all are most grateful for his leadership and commitment to bring peace and stability and human rights to uh, many people in Syria. As UN Arab League Joint Special Envoy, he has made a great uh, contribution. We remain extremely concerned about the fighting in Syria, the appalling death toll every day, the bombardment of civilians, the terrifying destruction of people's houses and historic sites, the unspeakable human rights abuses in detention centers. And the threat is spreading to the wider region. We are now working to establish a ceasefire stop the flow of arms, and 
Lakta Brahimi, his successor, is now working very hard to build on Kofi Annan's important groundwork for peace. In Syria and around the world, peace requires understanding and tolerance. And let's give a big applause to uh, Kofi Annan. <clears throat> I hope you will understand that because of time limit, I cannot. Sp I should write a book later about Kofi Annan in any way. <laughs> Archbishop Desmond Tutu is a champion of values. I applaud his campaign for human rights and global health. I especially appreciate his advocacy for the rights of all people, regardless of sexual orientation or gender identity. We cannot stand silent as long as members of our human family are being harassed, arrested, imprisoned, and even killed simply because of who they are or who they love. Their struggle is my struggle. I intend to keep speaking out with Arch Archbishop Tutu and advocates around the world until we stamp out this violence and discrimination in law and in practice. I offer my warmest congratulations to all those honored here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, 50 years ago, when Ted Turner announced his personal donations he said, I will quote, I wavered several times in the last few days. I almost changed my mind when I found out this morning that the United Nations said that UN cannot accept a gift. I thought, well, God is trying to tell me not to give my money. Of course, he was joking. His mind never wavered. He created a UN foundation. In his word, again I quote, to make things better for people all over the world. In so doing, he created a model of partnership that helps solve 21st century in a 21st century way. I pledge to build on this. Mr. Turner, you have succeeded. The UN Foundation lasted longer than we expected. It accomplished more than we hoped, and it promises even greater accomplishments for many years to come. We live in a time of turmoil and trans a transition, a time that demands a visionary leadership. I hope other people will follow the example of Mr. Turner and give what they can funds or expertise, ideas, or leadership to our great uh, global campaign for uh, progress. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I again thank you for all your support for the United Nations. United Nations or any other institution, any country can do alone in addressing all the challenges we are facing now. We are living in an era of uh, inequality, injustice, insecurity, and intolerance. During the general debate of the United Nations General Assembly a couple of weeks ago, I sounded alarm to the world leaders that we must be united to meet the expectation of all the people we care so much. And ladies and gentlemen, your support and your commitment can make United Nations stronger so that we can work for them. And again, I thank uh, Ted Turner and my distinguished producer, Kofi Annan, and all of you. I wish you all the best, and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.